Hey guys, so today we want to talk about something that several people have asked me about, and that's wet kits. So we have Landau trailers, we have RGN trailers, that's removable gooseneck trailers. So these are trailers that manipulate themselves hydraulically to load or unload. Like an RGN trailer can have a pony motor and it doesn't have to have a wet kit on the tractor, but all of our trucks with the Landau trailers, so the right way to do it is for you to be able to have a wet kit. So if you're watching this video because you saw the title about wet kit, you know exactly what it is. If you're watching this video and you don't understand, transmission has something called a PTO, which stands for power takeoff. So it's a mechanical way that while the engine's turning, it can put energy through the drive line into the transmission and then it's a port that you can build onto the transmission. And then using an air shifter, you shift that port in and out of gear and so then you can like send that rotational energy to a drive line or in our case we use it with a pto and the pto is connected to a hydraulic pump and it's integrated in one piece and that's the kind we use so then if you have that pump pumping the fluid then you need a place for the fluid to go so in the old days you would see an outboard tank like this and you need like 35 to 50 gallons and the reason you need the oil capacity is it pushes into the trailer and comes back as the motor or the engine from the truck through the transmission, through the PTO, is turning that hydraulic pump with cavitation and the way the fluid is pressurized, the fluid gets hot. So having that 35 to 50 gallons of capacity allows the fluid to cool off and then circulate through the trailer to do the work on the trailer that you need. And in the old days, this is how it's done. And as you can see, it takes up the place of a step. It has to be another outboard tank and it really doesn't look cool. So this is how we started doing it. And now we're gonna show you how we do it on our newer trucks. One of the things that I mentioned to you is that it's air shifted. So in the old days, this is what the air shifter looks like. It's this little guy that moves right here and it sends a little bit of air down. When you push the clutch in, it moves the gear into the gear that's rotating for the PTO that's off the main drive line inside the transmission. And when it does it, it contacts a little port in, in there with the light. So you get a light back up here to know that the uh, PTO is engaged and then you pull this up and you take it out of gear. And so this is kind of cool, but we've got even a better way of, of doing that as well. And as you'll notice, um, even though we're Parker Systems, uh, the Parker Hydraulic <laughs> name is just a coincidence. But you know, hit us up, Parker. In the evolution of us doing these PTO drive lines, you can see that same PTO controller. We were a little less sophisticated when we did these Peterbilt truck. And so the, this time, with these side boxes in the peat world, they call these before and after boxes because they're before the fuel tank and after the fuel tank. Here's our PTO output. And so we spent a lot of money and we had this custom stainless steel tank fabricated and it actually goes up inside this box. And you can see we have stainless fill neck and a stainless vent and we created 35 gallons right here. So this is where this truck gets its storage for its uh, wet kit. For the last four or five Peterbilt trucks we've done, we've upped our game just a little bit. So here we create this box. We, we can buy this piece of stainless and then we build this aluminum box custom. And then we even fix our air lines where they separate. Of course you can do it so you can get that real clean uh, kind of custom truck look. And then you see the hydraulic fittings here. We have our, our before and after toolboxes and we have no visible tank. And that's because we did something pretty slick on these last four or five Peterbilts that we've done is that we integrated the hydraulic tank into the frame and we made it out of, we made a sump and we did it out of a piece of uh, 12 inch tubing. So even on the uh, Kenworth truck that we call Big Girl, so we've added this box um, and it's where you come out. So it's pretty convenient again that we have the airlines break away and then the hydraulic lines break away. But uh, this truck actually has a tank, has two of those tanks, one on each side of the drive line inside the frame. And one of them we use for a uh, gray storage for the shower and the other one we use for the hydraulic. And again, it cools it. Now, one of the neat things about it, one thing that's pretty expensive and it creates a, product, a lot of problems is, is if you don't get enough oil to that hydraulic pump, it cavitates and cavitation is bad because it creates heat and all kinds of other problems inside a gear pump. And so, you want to have plenty of fluid to it. So the way you have plenty of fluid to it is you have a two inch line that feeds it from the tank. Well, you don't have to do it in a hydraulic line, but everybody ends up doing it that way. And those lines are very expensive. So by utilizing this 14 or 15 foot tank with the sump in it, we, we eliminate the need for that long line. So we put the oil back in the tank at the back of the truck as it returns from the trailer. 
and then it flows all the way to the front inside the tank. So like that two inch line hydraulic made, you know, that, that line might be a thousand, twelve, fifteen hundred bucks. So by doing that, we make that line really short. And so the fluid is right there. So by having that two inch line much shorter, we eliminate cavitation, the pumps run quieter and smoother. And we also get the benefit of the cooling because those tanks end up being about 40 gallons. And you know, most people recommend 35 to 50 gallons, but by doing 40 gallons and we have that entire length, we have a lot more metal surface area where the uh, actual oil runs against that. So the tanks cool better and it saves us a lot of money on that thousand or twelve hundred dollar line. So now it's only a couple hundred bucks instead of being that expensive because it's much shorter. And then it also shortens the return line back into the tank because the tank's exactly where it needs to be. It basically ends up under the connections for the trailer. So it's kind of a neat way to do it. Another thing that we do is we take and we fabricate those tanks and we build them here in our shop and then we blow them up with air pressure to make sure they don't leak. And then we get them all fixed up and then we fill them and, and finish them pretty good. And then we send them over to a, a location in Dalton, Georgia that powder coats them for us. So then we get a finish that's very similar to the truck and Paul and the guys that build those tanks, they build a custom bracket that integrates into the cross beam brackets that holds the frame from separating on the Kenworth and the Peterbilt trucks that we've done. So it turns out to be a pretty custom installation. And then like we mentioned, then we integrate with a Peterbilt air switch where we do the lighting to the switch so that it illuminates with the dash. And then we do the rocker switch so that when it comes on, you get the circle indicating that the PTO's on. And we go to a little bit of trouble with that because we use the sense from the Peterbilt. Peterbilt has a nice function where it has the computer, it gives you the actual input. And what it does is, is it looks for a ground or it looks for greater than five volts. So I did it with a couple of uh, AAA batteries. The thing nominalizes around four to five volts. So if you hit it with 12 volts, it turns the light on. And if you hit it with the ground, it turns the light on. So that's how we get the actual PTO indication in the dash. And when you take the dash cluster out, you can slide out that little plate and it has a place in there. And all those lights come on, but they have them blacked out. So you pull out this little teardrop looking little sticker and you can go to Peterbilt and you can buy the sticker for the PTO. So now you get a factory indication in the dash and you can wire that switch so that the indication just comes on when you flip the switch or you can wire it so that when the PTO engages with the pin against the gear, that's what tells you that you've got PTO to do the dash or that indication so you can do it either way you want it and then you get the indication on the truck. This video is a result of you guys. We've had a bunch of comments. We were out actually on a hurricane last year and somebody had seen some of our videos and we had, he was sitting there talking to us about the uh, hydraulic wet kits. And this is another example. This is uh, kind of in the middle. And you see, we didn't do the box quite as well, but we still have the same idea where we have the airlines where we can separate them. And then here we have the wet kit. And then that shows you the custom bracket we built. And it looks all factory. I mean, if you didn't know to look for that, you would really, by powder coating it and finishing it and getting that finish and that really protects it, and you know, it's a great way to do it. So this is another example of a video, people in the comments and people that meet us out, you know, they see these aspects of different things that we do custom to respond to hurricanes or to respond to how the trailers or trucks are set up. You know, we made this video because of you guys. We appreciate you watching. We would appreciate you if you'd leave a comment for us because we listen to them and we make videos like these. And if you'd follow it along to somebody in the trucking industry or somebody that you think would be interested in how we do this and subscribe. We really appreciate you guys following along.